Um, so I've been at National Jewish Health about eight years. Um, I graduated college right like when the internet happened. Um, so my first job was kind of in a consulting technology um, organization and then moved to the travel.com space and did a lot of um, custom product development for online travel as we were kind of pushing the travel agents out of the market with all the various um, online booking systems. So. When I came to National Jewish Health, I did not have a health background, but had worked a lot in um, product development and digital marketing and, and software development. Um, little, just a tiny bit about National Jewish Health. Um, we are a respiratory hospital, um, leading respiratory hospital in the country. We're ranked, um, we've been ranked first or second by US News and World Report ever since the category of pulmonary was introduced to their hospital rankings. Um, we're currently number two, but we are the only um, institution that's dedicated exclusively to respiratory care. We also um, have a, a large cardiology, um, GI, um, also both on the adult and pediatric side. Um, in addition to clinical care, which is what you might know us for, we also are a research organization, do both basic science and clinical research in the conditions that we treat, and we um, also are an academic organization, so we have a partnership with the um, University of Colorado for fellowships here, so training pulmonologists, and we're a nonprofit. So I share this not because it's necessarily Kentico related, but our needs are fairly diverse, um, you know, both in online fundraising and email communication, we have the whole consumer piece, we have a, a large B2B business, which we're not really going to talk about today, but Marty and his team back here from our IT department work with Kentico in a totally different aspect than we're going to talk about today. Um, developing software solutions for smoking cessation and weight loss, which is um, if you call 1-800-QUIT-NOW in Colorado or I think 15 or so states, it actually rings to National Jewish Health and we coach people and we have online software um, to help people quit smoking in addition to the coaching. So. Um, our use of Kentico is fairly broad, and I'm not going to go into all of that. Uh, today we're going to talk quite a bit about the main public-facing website, njhealth.org, um, but certainly um, have been able to do quite a bit outside of this with, with Kentico as well. Um, let's see, none of that's in my slides, we should get to this. So, um, when I started here, we were using a um, product called VitalSite, which is a content management solution for hospitals. Um, really kind of a community hospital, probably geared more towards community hospitals than an academic medical research center, but a lot of great out-of-the-box functionality to find a doctor or look up a program, put locations. Um, it was a great product for us for uh, what it was. Um, tons of out-of-the-box functionality and um, really was a great place for National Jewish Health to start with um, having a full web presence. Um, but what happened is we kind of outgrew that as, thank goodness, we outgrew this design and that's not even our, our brand anymore. But it was, it was a one-stop shop, pretty turnkey, geared towards marketing departments that probably didn't have a lot of um, depth of technical knowledge or desire to customize, pretty easy to just kind of plug and play. Um, but as I said, we, we kind of outgrew that, and we outgrew this design too, thank goodness, but um, we um, really found, as I mentioned, I came from a software development product management environment, so every time I would say, well, we want to do this, it was like, oh no, we, we, we can't do that. Um, and our vendor was growing in the number of clients that they were supporting, and so they really had to kind of commercialize and really get pretty cookie cutter with their product. And the customization just got harder and harder for us. We were one of their first clients, so we used to kind of get stuff done with them, but as they grew and grew, um, they had to serve lots of people with one common platform, and uh, we probably all get what that means. Um, and we had increasing business needs. We had some third-party system integration that was not really possible with this tool. Um, we wanted to do some custom searches, um, you know, or find a doctor. Well, we have researchers, and we have people who do both do research and clinical care, and we, I, I mean, it just was not quite fitting our needs anymore. And as it was no longer fitting our needs, the costs were going up. Um, customization, you could barely could buy it, but if you did, it was very expensive, and um, 
the cost for really the, all the services that we were getting continued to increase, even the licensing fee for the CMS, which we certainly have benefited from the Kentico licensing model in, in cost savings, um, were just really starting to um, be a challenge for us. So we started down a path of um, trying to find another solution, and I'm going to let Aaron talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, Sam said this is, this is our journey where it, it all began for us and trying to, to figure out what CMS to eventually land in because as most of us know in this room, there are a lot of them and there's a lot of junk and there's a lot of great stuff. There's also a lot of very expensive stuff and is it worth the price that you're paying for, for what you're going to do? And so uh, we started on this journey to identify a couple things, well, we actually had a laundry list of things that we said that CMS needed to have in order for us to identify it as a leading candidate. Uh, one of our first um, pieces, you know, was identifying um, our partners that we're dealing with. And so you'll see in a slide here in a second that uh, we, we were with Geometric and they were kind of a one-stop shop for us. You know, they did the, the development, they did the design, they did everything for us. So anytime we had a call, a problem, or a new functionality, we had to call Geometric, uh, which is great. You know, you only call one person and you get your problem fixed. Um, however, as Sam said, you know, we're kind of in this box of Geometric where, you know, they said, well, it's not really a functionality of the out-of-the-box Geometric, so we're not going to do it, or whatever the case may be. So um, we started looking around uh, because we knew we couldn't get that all in one shop anymore, we, just, we figured out we had to find a partner that could help us uh, with these other things that Geometric used to do for us, but also that could support us on whatever CMS that we ultimately landed with. So one of the first things was a healthcare specific partner. There are a lot of business partners out there that deal with Entico and other CMSs out there, but we felt that we uh, had an opportunity to try and find uh, a partner that had some experience in the healthcare space because it's a little bit different than a lot of other spaces. You know, there are a ton of exceptions that we have to deal with. To deal with PHI and getting that out on the web or hopefully not getting it out on the web. Um, and so having the understanding so we don't have to retrain these partners as to what we can and can't do on the site was huge for us. Um, so that was uh, one, of, one of the main pieces. When it came down to the um, enterprise CMS options, um, we looked at a bunch of them. You know, we looked at uh, Drupal, Magneto, uh, Actron, Vignette, and Sitecore, and a couple others that I'm not even gonna mention. Um, went through numerous demos, you know, trying to, to figure out what's going on. Uh, asking the same questions around all of them. Can you do this? Can you do that? And the, the answer is always yes, we can do this. Um, but when it came down to Kentico, that, they were the only ones that on the demo were to actually be able, they were able to show us what we were asking for while we were on the phone. You know, a lot of the others said, yeah, we can do that. All you gotta do is write this custom, this, that, and the other. But Kentico just did it right on the phone. And we're like, oh, that's kind of nice. So. Uh, that and uh, the cost of it obviously uh, helped in the making the, the decision. Um, yeah, it's one of those scenarios where we need to do a lot with the website, you know, beyond what we were with. But of course, there's no money to do it. Um, and so, how do you figure that out? How do you get to where you need to be on the same budget that you're currently given, uh, which is kind of difficult. Um, one of the places that we looked, as, uh, looked at, along with the CMS externally, is internally, what are we using here at National Jewish Health already? Maybe we can leverage some of those tools. Uh, the first one that came up was SharePoint. Uh, great tool, very expensive, uh, especially when it comes to licensing. Uh, we also had the problem with you know, support. You know, with Kentico, who here at, at uh, National Jewish has the chops to get what we need done in SharePoint? And the answer, as usually is, is that, you know, we've got this one guy who sits in the basement, he's got a red stapler, and he's a master. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Of course, he's gone 
51 of the week, weeks out of the year. Uh, and so we needed someone who could help us out, so I kind of quickly killed SharePoint uh, as an option. Um, as it turns out, uh, our portal team, our patient portal team, uh, was also uh, almost concurrently looking uh, at CMSs to help build out our homegrown patient portal uh, that they were building, and they were looking to use it for uh, the security aspects that were built into Kentico already, uh, so the login pieces, uh, and to eventually kind of roll some of the other additional functionality uh, into Kentico. Um, so they had originally selected Kentico and purchased it, uh, and so we kind of looked at that and said, well, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Let's, let's see if we can play with the same rules. We looked at it uh, in a deeper sense, found out that this is exactly what we, this is what we want virtually out of the box. Uh, unfortunately, the portal team decided at that point to drop get to go just it was primarily because they didn't have the support to, to fully integrate it. Uh, but we are talking uh, with the portal team to help bring that integration back into the patient portal that is currently not totally there. Um, we also looked at you know viability for the spider web. Spider web for us is our intranet. Uh, for whatever reason I don't know but the intranet uh, is not supported by the web team here at National Jewish. It's supported by a different group. And so um, we we're thinking, well, maybe down the road, you know, we can get them to bring the spider web into Kentico as well, and we can have this one tool uh, to help us integrate everything together. As well as the HI websites, which is health initiatives websites, as Sam alluded to, the, the Quit Now websites, uh, color up quits and all that other good stuff. They were all individual micro uh, sites that were maintained outside of the CMS. Um, and so the thing is, well, look, we have all this shared content between all of these sites. Why can't we get it into one system and share the content and get it out there? And so that's part of the ongoing project that's, uh, that Sam talked about uh, a little time ago. So this is uh, what I was just talking about. Uh, this is the way we were, you know, our, our hosting, our, our partner for design and everything in our CMS was geometric. It was just a one-stop shop. Uh, moving forward, we knew that where we had to be, because Kentico doesn't provide that one-stop shop, we knew we had to break out the hosting and the, uh, the business partner as well as the CMS into different pieces. Um, so some of the benefits uh, of moving to Kentico for us, uh, primarily the infrastructure. Um, big thing was that the website that we had in Geometric um, was, was fairly flat. And so when we had to go update content that was shared across the site, um, you know, we had to go in 50 million places and find that content and get it updated, which if any of you are content editors and you've got a site of about 8,000 pages, you know, it's a, it's a nightmare to maintain that type of thing. Um, so the benefit was to get our website with Kentico into a more dynamic state where, you know, just like any website these days, you know, any good website, that's the way it should be a dynamic website. Moving into the mobile design, uh, Geometric at the time really had no plans to make their platform mobile. This was a couple of years ago, so mobile really was just kind of a blip on the radar. It wasn't a big deal. Totally different story today. Um, the design, again, we could not make any changes in Geometric without going through them. So if we wanted to add a, a color to something or a, just move a piece of content from point A to point B, and we had to go to, to Geometric. It, it, it gets costly you know, having to do that. So, you know, as we know with Kentico, it's very easy to just take the content and move it or pull it in from elsewhere, and, and it works out really nice. <coughs> forms. Forms for us was a huge pain. We had a bunch, a bunch of stakeholders coming to us and say, it would be really nice if you could create this form. All we need is the name, address, phone, whatever it may be. Just put it on the site and we'll be good. 
Well, to us and Kentico users now, we know it's fairly easy to do that. We can do it in a matter of minutes. But with, Kent, with Genetric, again, we had to go back to, to them and say design this form. Three or four thousand dollars later, you know, just for a simple name address field, you know, it gets fairly pricey. And there's no flexibility. Um, forums at the time when we were looking at this, um, we don't, we only have one forum here at our at National Jewish, but there was talk and there still is some talk around about rolling out forums uh, in the site and, uh, and Kentico does that a lot, so we're pretty happy about that. Uh, content organization is great. Health tools, you know, we have a lot of like health calculators, calculating, calculating BMI, calculating your risk of having a heart attack in the next six months. Uh, those type of tools, again, we had to have designed by them, controlled by them, uh, which was a pain. So moving into the future, these are all the things that we were looking to do that were great that we could do this pretty much out of the box with Kentico. Uh, it was very exciting for us to get that done. Uh, to continue on with some of the capabilities, better content integration. Everything we do on our content is, or on our website, is integrated. You know, the, the doctors, which are the primary search focus of the site, you know, they are associated with programs, they're associated with divisions, <coughs> sections, all that stuff, and it's all interwoven together um, and that just helped us considerably within Kentico to pull that trick off without a lot of brain damage. Um, site search, much better for us. Uh, again, I have no idea what the rationale was with Geometric for their site search, but this was much better follow the most logic of the current search engines. Uh, a lot of the things we can control the short story is, is that, as we know, within Kentico, if you want to do it, it doesn't usually take a lot of work uh, to get it done, um, which is great. In the end, the maintenance, the cost savings, yeah, and if you've been listening, I've heard it, it costs us money, it costs us money, it costs us money. Well, now we're able to do it uh, pretty much in-house. We have a great partner that helps us quite a bit, but um, you know, the, the savings that we have and being able to do a lot of it in-house allows us to farm those dollars back out to our partner to, to expand the site into better places with greater functionality. Um, for better analytics, we, we currently use Google Analytics and we also sprinkle in a little bit of the Kentico Analytics. Just It's kind of a check to see what's going on. They do report slightly different things and say, like, well, let's What's going on? Why are they slightly different? That's your turn. Okay. So ultimately, after all this, you know, felt like analysis paralysis a little bit, but it was a big, big change for us. We um, take our partnership seriously. We have been around for 117 years, and we don't make big changes like this lightly. Um, but we did decide and gave the go recommendation to move. Um, to Kentico. Aaron didn't mention, but he comes from a backend and software development uh, experience for um, a long time with his gray hair. But, um, <laughs> and I mentioned working in the dot com environment, so we were really used to being able to get stuff done. And so this was really exciting to be able to say, okay, we're going to have a platform where we can actually get in, get our hands dirty, and um, make things happen. And um, we are not a development shop. Our IT team here at National Jewish Health really focuses on, um, in addition to health initiatives, all the systems that are required to run a hospital. So like our electronic medical record and our scheduling and our appointment system, um, they, they are not our um, technology partner for the, the uh, marketing website. They really focus on, on running the hospital and serving our patients, which um, our, our patients and, and I are grateful for. So. Um, we we use um, Blue Modus as our development partner. I think most people probably are aware of that. But we we did this search and um, tried to find somebody local. We were kind of predisposed to local, kind of predisposed to um, 
someone who had some healthcare experience, and we also really wanted to, we kind of whittled the list down by looking for gold partners. So um, that's been a good fit. We have really worked with them um, on different levels, but as I mentioned, we, we like to get our hands dirty, right? And so we've had this collaborative partnership where we can say, well, we actually want to do these portions of the development, like you guys do some of the more heavy lifting, or set it up for us and we'll finish it, or we're gonna take a stab at it and then not be able to do it and say, hey, can you please help us, which has happened. But um, it, it works pretty well and it's been pretty fluid for us. Um, and then you're gonna talk quite a bit about cost, but um, literally since I almost started, um, and I'm not sure if I'm proud or embarrassed about this, but we, we've had to keep the web budget, budget neutral. Like I do not get more money every year to do more. And so as we were facing rising costs with the CMS, like we, we could not continue to pay the licensing and the custom development fees that we were paying. We were really basically paying to move backward, not mobile, not being able to integrate third party systems. Like paying more to move backward was something we, we desperately had to get out of. And so being able to get into an environment which has pretty open, um, open development environment lots of different partner options, um, and the ability for us to do simple things like building up forms, um, you know, was, was really, really <coughs> important for us. Um, and then it, it didn't hurt at all that this was a collaborative decision with our IT department. We, we don't use our IT department for technical service of the website that we manage, but we are all under one umbrella, and so being able to say that, you know, we, we work with this one technology um, gives us both some in-house support should we ever decide to go that way and the bandwidth opens up, but even just the licensing agreements, um, it's really helpful to have that shared. Um, so I think I basically mentioned this in the um, graph, the chart, that pie chart of like we had one stop shop <laughs> to going to having to break everything apart. I mean that was a pretty big business decision. Um, and. You know, there, there's certainly a lot of cons to having to shop for your hosting separately, shop for your CMS separately, shop for your partner separately. Um, but we ultimately decided that to get the best of breed and the flexibility and the cost structure that we needed, we had to do that. Um, so there was there was quite a bit of work to um, getting to where we are in terms of support, and we did it backward. We didn't know we were doing it backwards, but um, it was explained to us when we were interviewing um, technical partners. Wow, really, you've already selected Kentico, and now you're talking to a technology provider. Usually, the technology provider is recommending the solution, and that's kind of the Kentico sales model, but when we approached it backward, I, I'm not sure, I think that was by accident, but what we heard over and over from partners was that, wow, we're, we're impressed that you guys picked Kentico because this is probably the best, the best tool for the business needs that we're hearing you articulate um, in that partner search process. So, that, that's a little bit reassuring as well to just get that feedback. Um, as I mentioned, we work with Blue Modus. We, Blue Modus is not a creative shop, and that was another um, decision that we had to make. Did we want to go with a shop that was really an expert in technology or an expert in um, kind of web design, UX, et cetera, as well as the technology partnership? Um, our initial project was a migration from point A to point B. We were not doing a redesign. We're not really changing the site very much. And so we really wanted to find the best person to move. And we, uh, Aaron said, you know, 8,000 pages of content um, and a lot of custom built functionality. It was a very heavy technology and content migration lift. And so we um, picked a partner that we felt was best for that and also had the understanding that, that um, we could partner with other creative agencies that would be familiar with Kentico and could fit into this new model that we were working with um, when the time came and we had to cross that bridge. Um, oops. Oh no, I just kept going over. Um, anyway, Erin's going to talk a little bit about kind of that um, partner search from the hosting perspective. Um, yeah, so the last piece of the puzzle really for us was deciding how in the world we're going to host this thing, um, which uh, you would think 
it would be fairly easy, and we thought it would be fairly easy in deciding who was going to host this thing. Uh, initially, um, we're, we looked to our IST department and said, can you, can you deal with this? And the answer was, sure, we can do it, but we didn't feel they were quite ready yet because um, we were in the middle of rebuilding our internal network uh, to get it up to snuff, and so we didn't want to get caught up in any issues with that. Uh, so we looked around at a bunch of solutions. Uh, ultimately, you know, it, what almost killed this project for Kensco, unfortunately, was the hosting situation. Uh, IST came to us and said, you've got to have it set up in a certain model. And Kensco isn't set up initially in that model. And so we, we almost had to close doors on that media idea right away. Um, Blue Modus, uh, kudos to them and our IT team got together. We had numerous meetings trying to figure out how to make it work. Uh, we finally got approval by everybody that said this is okay, we're okay to let this go, uh, as is, because you know we're not saving PHI on the website. We're not doing a number of things that would cause <coughs> particular problems. Uh, so in the end, we went with the Amazon solution. Uh, primarily because of costs, uh, and it, it met the needs for scalability, you know, if we need to, I don't know if anyone else is on Amazon here, but if you need to ultimately vamp, uh, kick up your server right away for mass traffic or whatever the case may be, it's fairly easy. Uh, here I am saying that and I don't do it, but I'm looking at the Blue Modus people and they tell me it's fairly easy. Uh, it's almost flipping the switch, right guys? Uh, but that's the flexibility that we need. You know, we need to be able to, if we know we're going to get hit with some traffic because of something, we can call them up and you can easily scale that with Amazon. Um, uh, the way it's set up as well is it allows us to, to move the site fairly easily. Uh, our, our intent when we decided to go with Amazon was to eventually move it back internally into uh, National Jewish Health Walls, uh, primarily you know, just because we like to have control over what's going on. And so once our, our IT department gets up to stuff where we feel that they're ready to handle that, then great. It's just a matter of taking it, plopping it down internally, and we should be okay, uh, which was great. Um, so, and the hosting is managed right now. Um, because our team is primarily just website driven, the content and functionality, we have Blue Modus manage our hosting. Uh, they go do all the server updates and all that. If there's a problem, we get them on the phone and they fix it fairly quickly, which was great because we just don't have this. We're not the team to do that. We're not an IT team, we're a web team. Um, so, this is where we ended up. We, where we were with Geometric doing everything to where we are today, um, the hosting and the design and all that other wonderful stuff. Pretty straightforward there. So the implementation of it. Uh, project kept budget neutral, as Sam alluded to. We don't get a whole lot of money. It's a big or, deal. We just keep talking about cost, but the dot org and our domain kind of um, speaks to that. It's a very big deal. Yeah. So we have no additional money to get this taken care of or moved in. So how in the world did we figure it out? There was plenty of mind-numbing conversations and how to deal with that. Uh, you know, do we do things? What can we do in-house? As Sam said. Uh, Blue Motors was has been tremendous in saying, you know, okay, we trust you guys enough to allow you to do these pieces, uh, and then we'll pick up the heavy lifting or whatever. Which, coming from a development background, I would have freaked out, and they probably did. They just didn't allude to us. Uh, that's what uh, that's what we wanted to do. Uh, but it, it was great uh, being able to come in and do that. They've been tremendous in helping us learn. Kentico. Um, I come from a development background, like I said, but the rest of the team does not. And so you know, there's there's that piece of lifting up the team to help them get some of the basics down, of, of just even some basic HTML, uh, which was great. Um, 
So obviously we had to move the current functionality, the existing forms, the existing data from the old platform into the new one, which was no small feat, as Nick Bushnell can attest to. Um, you could probably tell you stories forever on the data that we got out of the old system that uh, was a nightmare. But pulling in, we were able to enable the content reuse that we, we've been hoping for forever. Um, as well as uh, the site searches and minor taxonomy implementation. Uh, some of the larger enhancements defer to the future. So we had a, a, just kind of a thing internally that our goal when we moved over to Kentico was that if the end user, the front end user, noticed no change, then we will have succeeded. Which kind of is odd as you know, developers and stuff, we want them to see the change. We want them to notice. But Again, because of budgetary concerns, we had to do this in stages. And it was, I think it was very smart in our uh, behalf that we decided to keep the front end the same, but change the back end to Kentico. So, and then we spent a year trying to figure out Kentico, what it can do uh, coming in. We didn't know, you know we, we were told what the salespeople told us, what they could do, but then there's what can you actually do on your own. Uh, which was great, it allowed us to come in and just beat the snot out of it and figure out where our limitations were. <coughs> uh, and, and then again, because of budgetary reasons, and uh, we decided to then do the redesign, the front end redesign, which you'll see shortly. Um, that was just the icing on the cake as to how it, we fully implement Kentico. You know, we now have a full understanding of the back end, what we can and can't do. Um, and now let's just roll the whole thing out. So now we have this brand new presence, which we're excited about. Uh, the next. <coughs> so this was, uh, in order for us to go through this redesign, we were uh, told that we have to get up to Kentico 8. So we started on Kentico, was it 6? We started on 6, 7. Um, and so some of the new functionality that we wanted to use, we had to get up to Kentico 8. Uh, it was an uphill battle. Um, but we made it through it, and everything went, uh, I'm not going to say smooth, but it was, it was pretty good. So when I built this slide, I uh, had found this little online. And um, I was looking at it, and I was like, hey Aaron, what else should we put on the slide? Because I didn't really have anything to do with the Kentico upgrade, it was totally back end. And he was like, well, can you rotate the guy so it's like a steeper pitch? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I guess I could do that and just make him bigger. And that would pretty much tell our, our story of migration to, to Kentico 8. Um, it was definitely a challenge working through the architectural shift. Um, I think it was a, a bigger challenge than we had understood, um, but I mean, we're through it and we've moved on to, to bigger things and that's probably really all there is to say about the, the Kentico 8 upgrade. If you guys have been through it, um, you know what I mean. And if you joined Kentico at version 8, then congratulations, you played your cards right. And um, so we, um, Accomplished that, and then as, as Aaron mentioned, you know, it, it worked out to be really a, a blessing to have to not update the front end of our website until after we had Kentico kind of living and breathing. Um, we were able to much better understand how it could help drive our business and inform the redesign, the front end redesign. Um, so that was the, the part that we just literally uh, launched earlier this month. Um, was a redesign of the front end. So these were our business objectives. Um, we really needed to be mobile like uh, a long time ago. Um, so we were able to, um, that was kind of a huge driver for us. Um, update the look and feel. I mean, uh, that web page that I showed you before just um, really felt like um, the late 2000s, because it kind of was. Um, or early 2000s, and then reworked the nav structure. Um, we serve lots of different audiences, as I mentioned when I was talking about um, kind of what we do. We have the donor audience, we have a huge um, scientific audience that uses our website, we have referring physicians that use our website, and then patients and prospective patients. We um, 
author all of our own health content. So a lot of um, hospitals will license a health library. Um, as the leading respiratory hospital in the country, we choose to author all of our own health content, which is a big heavy lift and requires a lot of um, ongoing maintenance. We're um, HON code certified, which means that we keep our content current. We have to post who has reviewed it, when they last reviewed it, and if you're looking for health information on the web, it's always good to see a date and uh, that there actually was written by a, 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 a professional that you would consider trusting with your care. Um, so there's a lot of work and a lot of content, and we really needed to figure out how to make it more accessible. Um, our site was set up probably like a lot of websites um, have, and some still are, but very siloed. So let's take the topic of asthma. We treat asthma. It's one of the largest conditions we treat. We have clinical trials related to asthma that can be found in the research section. We have asthma programs that were found in our programs and services section. We have doctors for asthma found in our doctor directory. We have um, health content about asthma found in the health information section. And it was, we, we cross-linked, I mean, we, we did a lot of manual cross-linking in our legacy system, um, but it was a lot of work, uh, frequently was out of date without us intending for it to be, and um, really didn't provide a strong user experience for someone who was coming to the site to find out, hey, I have asthma, what can you do for me? Um, so there was just a, a lot of work around the navigation uh, that we knew we needed to do. Um, and we kind of envisioned what we wanted to do before we even engaged the design partner and then had tested some um, beta pages trying to make that happen and, and knew we could do that. Um, and then to just try to increase, you know, our, our website had been launched prior to social media even being a thing, that's how old it was. Um, so we, we knew we needed to um, kind of kick up engagement on the site and there were some definite structure, structural opportunities for SEO improvement. <laughs> that we wanted to take advantage of. Um, so we launched this, uh, what, September 12th, um, and um, are still kind of, <laughs> we were like, oh, this, this thing, this thing on Friday is happening? Oh my gosh, we've been so focused on the redesign. Um, but uh, we're excited to get this out, the fully responsive website. We are using taxonomy uh, a ton. And I'm not going to go too much into how this all works, because Dave Conger from Lumos is going to share uh, a little bit about how we built this out and what it looks like. But um, we've done quite a bit to um, bring all of the content into kind of this one-stop shop experience. So when you go to learn about asthma, you learn about all this content that used to be in all these different areas of the site. Um, someone in the RFP process referred to it that, our, that users had to be gophers. They were gophering when they went on our website. They would go down one and then come back up and have to move to the next hole and go down to find the content. And that really captures the experience that we had. We also um, enhance our provider pages. So those are our doctor bios. We um, are part of a group of hospitals that have moved to publish physician reviews on the web. So. Um, lots of websites have popped up out there, um, and consumers really are very uh, very review focused, right? Like I'm, I'm sure most people um, have used Yelp to check out the restaurant that they're going to, or um, figure out where they can grab a bagel close by using reviews. Reviews go back forever. Consumer Reports, just going anywhere. I'm showing my age, but um, that really has taken off on, in the healthcare space with sites like Health Grades and Vitals and Zocdoc, RateMD. Lots of places you can rate a doctor, which is kind of scary. Um, and scary for us because um, people put comments out there that we have no control over. Um, so we, with this project, also integrated our own physician review data. Um, when you search one of our doctors on Google, now the star rating for our doctors from our system are showing up, which um, it's pretty cool, it helps with our search engine results and also helps drive a click because you see those stars just like you might see for a restaurant. Um, and it's definitely enhancing our doctor bios significantly. And that was a third party system integration um, from our, our uh, patient survey partner, Press Gainey. Um, so I've, I've talked quite a bit about this. I, I don't wanna go too much into the website. It is out there, publicly available, but um, Tons and tons of work we added, probably 
four to five hundred new photos that we shot, um, both doctor bio photos and photos around the institution of patients. I have the mind that um, we have doctors and patients, so using stock pictures of doctors feels really not genuine and not the caliber of institution that we are. So there was a huge photo effort. Um, we wrote fresh content for these new landing pages. There was a, a big writing component to the project. Um, and then certainly all the taxonomy and tagging. Um, Tasha, who's quiet but mighty, um, she has really done just an insane job of putting together um, the taxonomy and tagging all of the content so that it shows up correctly. Um, that taxonomy structure is custom to us and we had to, a lot of um, what I would definitely call brain damage to figure out the right way to implement taxonomy because um, there were just different different ways of doing it. Like Kentico's fantastic. Oh yeah, you can do it. You can also do it like three or four different ways. And what are the business implications of those choices? What are the business implications from a content management perspective, a content delivery perspective, maintenance? Um, you know, we, we really needed to weigh how we wanted to accomplish this against several different models and, and understand and pick the right one, um, which was definitely a challenge. Um, this is kind of our one-stop shop. We developed about 20 of these pages for the specialties that we treat, so allergy and immunology, cardio, cardiology, oncology. We broke pediatrics out into a separate structure, and we have these landing pages that bring together patient stories, clinical trials, health content, infographics, um, our marketing messages, links to programs, on and on and on, which are all data-driven. Um, definitely not simple, but um, also came out looking pretty good and seemed to be um, a good user experience. We're kind of, you know, we said we launched uh, September 12th. We did a lot of usability testing along the way of this project. We tested our old site. We tested the NAV structure. We tested um, kind of the concept pages as visual designs, and then we tested before we went live. We're going to do another round of testing, um, but overall, um, feeling like these, these pages are working fairly well. Um, and this is the enhanced doctor bio. Um, so it shows um, kind of these star readings. And um, this is fairly new for hospitals to be quite this like, show, you're really opening the kimono. Like we have these comments that come from um, patients' mouths that talk about their experience with their doctor and we're publishing them. That was a little bit scary for our docs. Um, but overall, almost all the comments are good. What you find on third-party sites, and probably no surprise to you guys that do it, like people either like write a scathing review, they hate, so they're motivated by like a horrible experience, or they love it. And so when you look on third-party sites, our docs are either fives or like they didn't have a good experience, which happens. Um, and so when we're publishing this data, we can um, one we guarantee a sample size of thirty. They're all authentic patients, um, real patients that really have been seen here, not your irritated neighbor. Um, or, and, and then the comments, we, we do cleanse them for personal health information, but we really don't take out the ones that say, like, seem like my doctor was in a rush. Um, almost all the comments are good, which um, are above kind of national benchmarks, both for hospitals and certainly these third party sites. And, um, there's been a little bit of a, a curve with the doctors to say, yeah, we are gonna put out that the patient felt like you didn't listen to them. That is genuine, it's authentic, and um, it's rare. So it's gonna sit in a list of comments that are actually fairly flattering. And it, it, I mean, when I look online, if every comment is good, you're like, something's, something's a little off here. So it adds some authenticity. It also adds a lot, um, we had, some, we had some challenges with our brand as an academic medical research center. That doesn't sound like your friendly community doctor, right? So we really wanted to overcome this idea that we are um, kind of from the hill on high, like you should only come here if you're super sick, we're very, very serious into research, or that, that there's a perception of that. And um, the patient experience at National Jewish Health is very, very warm. There's a huge connection. People. Um, we treat chronic illnesses, so they come back over and over. Unfortunately, yeah, most of what we treat is not curable, like COPD um, and asthma and allergies, things like that. So actually, the, the 
brand perception and the way that we really show up to our patients is very different. So putting this kind of content on the site, fresh new doctor, this is not a new doctor photo, this is what I was calling the high school yearbook photo. We've shot them all to be like in a real life situation, um, which has been a huge project and pretty cool, but really just trying to add to the, um, helping people understand when you come here, this is who you're gonna see and this is what they're like. Um, and so what's next? Dave Condor is next to talk about uh, the technical aspects of the project, but really we're, we're still finishing the project. As any of you guys know, we rolled out a big website. Like when it's live, everyone's like, oh, aren't you relieved? Isn't it great? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> there's, there's so much to do. We have well over a thousand internal customers that are looking at our site now, calling and have feedback, which has been awesome. We've had to rework some of our assumptions around data sources. Um, we've had to, uh, people say, well, this, this page, this, this number is wrong. And it's like, well, I can compare that to the whole website and it's been out there for a long time. So it's not wrong, you just need to update it. And so we've been getting a lot of, lot of user feedback on updates and tweaks, but really primarily on the content side. Um, it's been very well received. We want to increase the use of taxonomy. Um, we need to move our research interests into our primary taxonomy structure. Like, doctors used to be able to say anything they treat, every research interest they could possibly have. So our research interest list is like hundreds because they only lived on static pages. Now we make them searchable. Like, all of those have like one or two people that <laughs> come up for them. And so we're trying to really streamline that and apply taxonomy to other areas on the site that will benefit from that. Um, and actually our license that um, we have for Pentaco includes the, the marketing suite and we really have not been able to get into um, leveraging the A-B testing um, that we could take advantage of and some of the, the cooler tools that um, are waiting for us as we move forward. So we're excited. I, I kind of feel like with this redesign we've gotten to a place where we can move ahead. Um, we've caught up, <laughs> um, which was a, a pretty heavy lift for us just to, to get to like today, but being able to continue this trajectory of um, progress, you know, I, I feel like we're going to be able to do some things that really position us ahead, um, which as a, a leading organization, we, we would like to have our web presence feel ahead. So we're excited. Um, and it has not been easy, as Dave will explain. Um, here's our emails. Also, webmaster at njhealth.org will get to us. 